Surprise! The motor's arrived early. Carl got in touch a few days ago and the freight was getting organised. And we thought it would be a week. It's always been about that long here, but it was the next day. So we're into it. What Duncan doesn't know is that we really want to put this motor in the boat when he's here. And he's due here in two weeks. Well, ten days. So it doesn't give us much time. So I've asked the guys to do everything to get the holding tanks in. Because the holding tanks have to go in. A whole lot of work has to happen. It's been a hive of activity over the last few days trying to get things ready. But I'll show you what's next what we still have to do before those tanks can go in and then with Duncan's arrival that. the holding tanks are going to go in here there's some pipe work that needs to happen around here this area here needs to be tidied up these tanks, the fuel tanks they need to be ready to go for the motor when it comes in once we've done that then we're going to work on this area here we just need to make some holes better but bigger here we need to tidy this up this is where the gen set's going to go we're not going to be able to do a whole lot of grinding and everything else once these lovely tanks are in here and the motor's here. So we're going to do this before we get the motor in. And of course with our fourth crew member soon to join us, we have to get these cabins done. The doors have to go back on, the wall has to be finished. There's quite a bit to do and you'll see that over the next 10 days, which is hopefully when the motor's going to get dropped through the top of the boat. Through the deck or floor here. You remember that's where the old one came out and plumped nicely just in there. But that's the next couple of episodes. We've taken a sunken fishing trawler and converted her to a community funded expedition and research boat crewed by volunteers from around the world. Because life's too short not to fight for your dream. Right, this is ready to go. So I've done two layers and I've put a little bit of colour in the second layer. So this is the original first layer, so it's sort of like an off tan colour. And then I've put a bit of white pigment in so that I can see where I've built it up. So this is the second layer here. Might need a touch more in some of these places, it's sort of sagged down a wee bit, but overall that's pretty good. Time to start sanding this. There it is, sanded. So you can see really nice radius all the way along every corner on the top of the box, right the way around. Got a lovely radius down there backside all along this end of it so the plan is now to go through with some fine glass this is uh, 128 gram so i want to do a skim of that right across the top and then extend it all the way down the side so that the top is really tied into those sides
Right, first tank glassed up. So one layer over, that's what I'm going to put on this. I just need to make sure that the top is bound to the sides. The white pigment and the resin doesn't really show up that much because it's not a hugely thick layer of glass, but at least it's whiter. I'm going to be painting these white, so the more white I have, the better. Going to do this one next. It's getting late in the day. I think I'll probably tackle that one tomorrow, get that glassed and painted. But for now, at least we know what they're going to start to look like as a finished box. Before I put these tanks into the boat, I want to give them a really good skim and fear and paint so they're going to look like absolutely smick and perfect when they go in. There might be one or two layers of glass that then sort of drop off so that there's, you know, plywood then two layers of glass and it's a bit of a jump. That's the sort of thing that I want to fear in. So um, there's a wee bit of work to do on them still so that they look good. Um, this is the only opportunity I get to do it. I'm never going to be pulling these tanks out again so I want to get it right the first time. There's a bit going on this morning. Doors, these are in the freezer room, they're getting cut. Uh, the sanding needs to happen on these tanks, so got this tank here to sand and then glass, and that tank there to give a, a sand and a fear so we can start painting. This um, shelf work that Tim built for us a long time ago now, years ago, um, we need to route her about 50 mil off the front, it's a bit too deep. These wall panels are getting sanded and then all of them are getting painted. This is the other door for the second cabin downstairs in the freezer room. We need to skim about maybe 10 mil off the bottom of that door so that it clears the carpet. While that's happening, these are the drawers that live in Beck's cabin downstairs. So the faces are getting pulled off. This is a drawer with a face off and this is a drawer with the face on. We need to route her where these sliders are we need to basically route her about a mil or so off so we can put some new ones on and the new ones are slightly wider that's because the ones that are on there don't work properly and it's too frustrating noisy and these new ones hold the drawers in so they're kind of locked so the new sliders are ball bearing sliders as opposed to just like a wheel this is the original style where it's just a basically a wheel but these don't lock so the new sliders have a push lock fitting in them so you can essentially close it and have them lock on you I'm using a, a flush cut, basically it's got a bearing at the top, you can either get them with bearings at the bottom, bearings at the top or no bearings. This one's got a bearing at the top and what it means is that you can just clamp a bit of wood um, along the line that you want to cut and, and this bearing here will run along the edge of that piece of wood and cut no further in than that. So it makes it really easy to cut straight lines really well. I need to come up a width of paint. So if you look vertical, you can see that I've basically cut in a few millimeters, but I had the adjustment slightly wrong. So the paint at the top here is just sticking off. You see that paint, I can bend it down. I've basically <laughs> need to adjust it one layer of paint. Um, but you can see it's, it's got a beautiful flat cut in there like that. So by running along with this board and the flush cut the way that I've got it, you end up with an amazing finish.
Dame and Burke are experimenting what depths they need to route out for the drawers. This grey paint that I'm sanding off is Joe Domestic 90. It's a high build epoxy fairing paint which is great for filling in small imperfections. Time to get some paint on these tanks now. We've moved the tank into the shade. We're going to be using Poly U 400. It's a wattle paint. It's a two pack polyurethane. Jess is heading off to town to get some parts. Over the back here, we're racing showers of rain. So there's been rain sort of coming in and out all day. Drawers, they're getting assembled. Birk's doing that now. I'm gonna go through, um, that's one coat on that tank. I need to go through and put another. This one over here needs, an, it needs its first coat and second coat, but I need to give it a really good sand first, get all of the bits of fiberglass and dags and whatever off. These uh, wall panels, that little one there, has had one top coat, we need to do a second. These ones here are, are all done, they dry. Doors, over the back, we ran out of yellow paint, we didn't bother mixing any more up, so we've got to do another another belt of yellow paint over that. Um, but they're ready to go, and the bottom end that's been trimmed off, that's all been painted up. So it's a bit of a bits a day, if that makes sense. We can't really plan to do a lot of painting outside, but we are planning to do painting inside the engine room. I've got the first coat on the second tank and this tank over here is the first one that we painted that's now dry. It's time to unleash the OCD. So where I've got things like this where you can see a seam on the fiberglass, same deal over here you can sort of see there's, there's two layers that overlap by that and there's a seam just there, little seam there. I want to go through with 240 and just basically, 240 grit sorry, and just really skim that down as well as a few um, just sort of imperfections you run your finger across you can feel them on the top. None of this is necessary, this is just me being me and having access to 240 grit sanding discs.
Now that we've got the tanks just about ready to install, we need to start getting this grey epoxy that Beck put in oh, a wee while ago now. We need to get that lightly sanded up, just give it a scuff and then start getting a top coat on. We want to put a two pack of um, polyurethane paint down here, the same stuff that we're putting on the tanks, um, mainly because it's, it's phenomenal for mould, it doesn't get any mould growing on it, it's really good, but also we don't want to have to do any maintenance under these tanks for a long, long time, so we're doing it all right now. Then the next day, the second coat. So it's time to have a go at these sight glasses. Um, BX over the back, he's got some cream paint that's going on the doors and the walls. While that's happening, I'm gonna try and level up uh, these tanks and then pour in some epoxy into these sight glasses. So one thing we wanna do is fill up these sight glasses, but we wanna put a heap of chop strand mat fibers and so on in there. And this is something Bob Adams mentioned on YouTube for us. So kind of trying to just mash this up as small as I can, just to lots and lots of little bits. You can buy this as a powder, like literally just the strands, but they were out of stock, so I'm making my own. The guys did try this method, but it didn't go see-through. Uh, it could be that they didn't leave it in long enough, but we didn't want to take the risk, so they pulled it out and restarted. If I was doing this again, there's a couple of things I'd do differently. One suggestion was put a clear window at the top so you can put a light on and shine down into it while you're looking at the sight glass. Thought that was pretty awesome, didn't think of it, but probably would have done that. The other thought I had was getting some uh, HDPE white plastic and putting it as like a, a backing about an inch away from that window so as you shine a torch in you can see it against the white background. But um, you know, I think they'll be alright as they are but yeah, would have done things a little bit different had we been doing them again. Tanks are now being painted, the sight glasses came out really nice. You can see they're like really quite clear. Don't know if the chop strand was going to work but it just, it seemed like it just wouldn't go clear on us so we pulled it out but I'm happy with that. I think that's gonna be plenty strong enough. We've got a layer of glass at the back, it's 150 GSM, and then we've got two layers of epoxy on either side of it. So we've let it dry, and then we've put two layers of epoxy on either side of it. And then this here was filled up with resin, and as we're doing it, you could see it going in to some of the voids in the ply, and there was there's a little bubble just there. I'm really quite you know, confident that that's not gonna come out. I'm happy with that. And same deal over here, this one, similar sort of deal. That's nice and strong. So, yep, we have some sight glasses. You can see the guys are starting work on the fuel tanks. There's a bit to do. We've got a weld in, a bigger pipe for fuel transfer around the boat between tanks. We've got to do a nice clean. We've got to fix some leaks in the bungs. Ah, there's a wee bit to do, but that's next week. It's not long since we got back from New Zealand, from Christchurch, staying with our lovely Patreon, Jason. Jason! Thanks, Jason, for looking after him. Caught behind the Venetian blinds How to reach for the city lines This ain't where I belong Hey, look at me, man, what I become I've been running east Looking for sunset Digging deep since nine What I thought was gone Sitting in my pocket In plain sight All alone I think it's time for me to go Burn all bridges All I know I got lost along the Welcome way Welcome to Brisbane for your safety and comfort But please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened
let's enjoy it. 